G'day Moodlers and welcome to Moodle 2.0. The purpose of this screencast is to give you a quick flavor for the feature enhancements in the latest stable major release of the Moodle Learning Management System software. It's version 2.0. Now it's been quite some time in the making and I think it's pretty fair to say that this screencast won't serve as a definitive list of all the new and improved features. It's just not realistic to uh, demonstrate all of those wonderful things in, uh, in such a short period of time. So I do apologize in advance for all of the aspects that I won't be covering. Um, but look, on the same token, I'd encourage you to get onto docs.moodle.org. Um, you, can, you can certainly read up on the release notes and see the full functionality um, by the documentation with you there. Okay, look, in a nutshell, why would uh, existing 1.9 or earlier uh, Moodle users want to upgrade to 2.0? Why would uh, other people out in the e-learning community who are evaluating learning management systems consider Moodle 2.0? Very simply, uh, compared to earlier versions of Moodle, it is more usable, it's prettier, uh, it's easier to tag and comment. Uh, there's now ways to control and manage the learning path of users. Uh, we can now push and pull data to and from um, third-party services. Um, we can promote and share courses uh, with other Moodle instances. And there's a fair bit of improved admin functionality as well. So that's a little taste for where we're headed and perhaps why, um, or I guess a bit of a rationale for Moodle 2.0. So let's kick off with navigation. Um, look, we're on the front page, by the way. This is a standard plain vanilla installation of Moodle 2.0 um, and we're logged in through seeing the system through the eyes of an administrator okay, who can pretty much um, see and do all as far as global settings, uh, courses and users and functionality is concerned. So look, as far as navigation is concerned for 2.0, we've now got this navigation block sort of pinned up on the top left and that will in fact follow all users wherever they go throughout the system. Okay, the idea there is to, uh, to make, uh, make the system more usable um, and in fact make it possible to navigate to most places in less clicks. Okay, so my home um, for existing Moodlers is um, you know, synonymous with the My Moodle page. Okay, so uh, it's a personalized dashboard page where users can view the courses they're enrolled in and any information that is relevant to them. Site home, that could well be the front page or it might be the My Moodle page or another page depending on how that is configured by the system administrator. Site pages, uh, that will certainly be visible to the system administrator. It may not be visible to users in lesser roles, again, depending on their uh, permissions and capabilities. Uh, you, all users will see the My, My Profile function there in the navigation block and you can see the features listed courses. Courses will list uh, those courses or discrete units of study that the said user is currently enrolled in. And again, they become a click away like so. So we go straight in here and you can see again within the navigation block it has followed us to, uh, to this particular context and we can see the topics or sections uh, that are if you like sort of threaded within the navigation of this particular block. Again, you could expand any of those sections or topics, or they could be weeks depending on the course format, and you could drill straight into a granular level to a particular activity with a single click. So it does make um, navigation a breeze um, you know, within and throughout the system now, and naturally you can simply return home uh, you know, with, with a click as well. And I guess, I guess it's now, um, you know, it's an option as opposed to simply using um, the breadcrumb option as um, you know, current Moodlers would be familiar, you know, in uh, Moodle 1.9 and, and earlier versions. You might have noticed these little blue threads, if you like, there, um, alongside these blocks. If we click those, it now docks those blocks into uh, you know, vertical tabs on the left side of any page. 
okay? And we can simply mouse over them and it serves up, um, you know, the functions that are, you know, are relevant to the assigned role and context for the said user, okay? So it is a very nice way to um, declutter any page. I might add that this, uh, this function here only affects the said user's view of the system, okay? Not everybody else's. And, you know, it's all about decluttering um, the system for the user. Uh, clean space is easier on the eye, and it does, in fact, uh, make the system more user usable. Um, look, if you do prefer it the old way, um, you can click those blue threads again to um, undock those blocks. So we're back to the way it was. I'll just return to the front page now. Okay, look, on the topic of blocks, uh, and we're editing on, I mean, we've got the usual suspects that existing Moodlers would be familiar with. They're back again. We do have a few new blocks that are noteworthy. Uh, I've added these to the front page already. The comments block you can see there um, is essentially a shout box. People make public uh, text-based announcements and other people in the context can read them and uh, I guess comment back. Community Finder, we'll get to in a little while, but that does relate to the hubs functionality, okay, and the ability to, uh, I guess, share and promote courses and uh, I guess the Finder is a way to seek out courses on other Moodle instances and have them listed on that particular block. Course completion status and self-completion probably don't belong necessarily on the front page, but more likely on a, you know, like a My Moodle and or a uh, course page where um, it relates to essentially the ability for teachers and students to uh, track progress through a course. And up until Moodle 2.0, that hasn't been a, a function. You know, users, uh, users have sort of been hanging in a course and teachers and students have been unsure who's where and who's completed and who, who hasn't. So this is, uh, this, is, this is a very welcome mechanism. Okay, there's some other blocks, uh, new blocks. I'd encourage you to explore those and check them out for yourselves. Okay, now we did say Moodle has, uh, has gone about, uh, it's, it's prettier and there's, there's now a few ways to uh, you know, go about making the standard themes uh, you know, configurable and customizable and it's uh, fairly trivial. Via the front page, um, site admin block, appearance, themes, theme settings. We'll just point out a few of the parameters here. Uh, the theme list and allowing user course and category themes is nothing new, but the ability, uh, I guess this parameter here, theme designer mode, will be useful for theme developers and people testing themes when they want to reset their cache. Um, being able to allow changes in the URL could be useful also um, for themes for a variety of reasons. Custom menu items is a new parameter here. And it makes it very easy to, uh, if we follow the syntax there, to set up um, this horizontal um, navigation menu system within your learning management system. Okay, so I can look and feel a bit more like a website. So that will now become a very easy thing to do. On the same token, um, in fact, I'll go to one of the themes in particular, then we can check out a list of uh, the standard themes. Uh, some of these standard themes also give you the ability via the, I guess, the, ad, the Moodle admin interface to change some of the, the styling elements without having to, uh, to get FTP or, or control panel or, or server level access to do so. So things like putting uh, you know, logos, into, um, logos into a header or a tagline, changing the color of links, column widths and other you know, sort of CSS elements uh, can be can be controlled here directly within the Moodle interface for certain themes. Okay, so it's a, it, it does make the appearance um, of the themes more customizable and configurable and, and easy to do so. 
And I guess for those who are new to Moodle, a theme is synonymous with a skin or a template. It might be language you're more familiar with, uh, with other systems. These are the standard themes, default themes within Moodle 2.0. Uh, they're different. Um, I guess now it's all about being brighter and bolder. Um, you know, there's a variety of colors and styles and fonts and layouts. Okay, and you can in fact uh, configure these or you can select these standard themes for a modern or an old browser. And I'll leave you to interpret what the difference might be between a modern and an old browser. But you get some idea there in terms of how theming will work for Moodle 2. So there's a lot of positives to be had. I guess if there's any, if there's any uh, drawback to all of that, it's the likelihood that um, you, your current themes, so your standard or your third-party themes for Moodle 1.9 or earlier, won't be uh, upwardly compatible. So that will likely mean you'll need to modify or redo your existing themes um, for 2.0. So just bear that in mind before you, uh, before you upgrade. Okay, as far as a HTML editor is concerned, uh, we've got a new editor for, new WYSIWYG editor for 2.0. It's called Tiny MCE. Here it is. It's now cross browser compatible, so you can not only use it for Firefox and IE, uh, it should be compatible for Chrome and Safari and other modern, modern day browsers. Um, I'd encourage you to explore it yourself. The HTML editor is your friend and it is the way to make Moodle pages pretty. Um, just a few things that are probably noteworthy is the ability to embed media very quickly uh, via the HTML editor and the spell checker, the Google spell, as opposed to probably no spell checker for most um, Mo Moodlers up until now. Uh, that is, I guess, unless you're on a Linux platform and you might have had access to a spell. So HTML editor. Okay, now let's go to navigate our ways to a course. We'll get away from the demo. We'll go to the sandpit. The sandpit is just our place to experiment. Um, we'll make things break things with no consequences. Not a formal course just yet. It's in fact a blank canvas. But look, we come in, we turn editing on, and we can then go about adding resources. So for existing Moodlers, there's nothing too far in here other than the language has been simplified in the Add a Resource drop menu. Um, look, we'll add, a, we'll add a file. So what we'll do firstly is give it a name and then the mandatory description. So we go to select the content that we wish to add. Now this is where it gets interesting. This is a real game changer for Moodle. So gone are the days of uh, uploading, simply directly uploading files and copying them into the Moodle course and having to uh, manage them there. Um, we, can, we can pick files from a variety of locations, including the server, the private files, and then some third-party um, repositories. If these are configured and enabled by your system admin, including Google, Google Docs, Dropbox, Flickr, YouTube, Wikimedia, and the like. Okay, so um, you know you've got some you got some options there uh, in terms of how this might be. Um, look, just by way of example, we'll just choose one of these. Run a keyword search on Flickr. Flickr is a photo sharing site. So naturally, you would want to own the resource that you're about to upload, or else or else have uh, have permission to use it. That would be the, the premise under which you're going to make this resource available. So look, let's just choose um, choose that particular file. We've selected it. It's uploaded, and that is done. Okay, so we've got the repositories plug in there again. It gives us the ability to pull or import uh, resources from a variety of sources, like uh, never before. As far as uh, exporting goes. That's a, a real game changer as well. I'll tell you what, why don't we add an activity to make this possible. Let's add a forum. We can go, perhaps uh, show you something else while we're at it here. The forum has changed. Well, there's a new forum type, I should say. That's the blog format. So, so just giving the forum a title 
and an introduction. Okay, so that is there. We've set the forum up. What we'll do now is add a discussion topic. So for those not familiar with forums, it's a public space to discuss good ideas and exchange ideas, ask questions, get answers, help one another in an online collaborative sense. So look, we'll make our first post to the forum and I'll just say this is whatever's going on here, message goes here. We might want to attach a file as well. So we could go grab a file um, if need be. Okay, so we've got an image like so. We'll select that. We're going to attach this file to our forum post. So that is there. Now, we'll add another discussion topic. And a message that goes with it. We'll post that just quickly to illustrate this blog format again. It's very much like the standard forum for general use that existing Moodlers would be familiar with. Um, we're now able to serve up that same forum in a blog type format with the, uh, with the various um, threads if you like um, in this sort of view. Um, back to what we were saying about um, I guess you know, the notion of port the portfolios and, and the capacity to push or export artifacts away from Moodle to third-party sites and services. Um, you can see here this idea of um, exporting the portfolio. We've got the link there and also alongside the, the graphic. So look, we'll just do that. There's, uh, you know, the user ought to be in control of their learning artifacts. Um, they're not owned necessarily by the institution um, or the system administrator uh, for that matter. So we've got a, a, a few places we could select as the destination for this exported file in this case. Okay, so we might simply want that to be a file download. If it were Mahara, um, that's the ePortfolio system. Okay, um, and we could export, um, export our learning artifacts to it. So very flexible, very open, and I think that's the way learning needs to be. The ability to push and pull um, or export or import content um, that you have permission to do so. All right, so that's been done and that's downloaded. Going back to the course now. So look, as far as other activities are concerned, um, I'm mindful of time and I really encourage you to explore these. I'll perhaps make brief mention of them without demonstrating um, many more of them. Um, but certainly the blog, if we can call it an activity, is the sort of thing you want to visit. Um, if you're familiar with it already, it has changed. Um, the ability to blog and associate it with a course, the ability to comment, search and copy and actually feed in from an external blog into your Moodle blog. Um, feedback. Feedback was a third party contributed uh, module that's now found its way into the standard release of Moodle, but it is disabled um, globally by default. So you'll have to ask your system admin to turn it on. Um, again, that will be excellent for you know, the likes of web forms, unit evaluation, surveys, questionnaires, etc. Uh, we, we said a bit about forums. Um, We'll have a look at um, quizzes perhaps, if we add a quiz. We'll actually just check first, we've got some questions in the quiz bank. Uh, we appear to, which is good. Look, I will turn to the course page itself. Okay, so look, with editing on, adding an activity, and it's a quiz. Quiz is a great revision tool. OK, 
Okay, you put questions in the quiz bank ideally and you can compile those with your colleagues over a period of time and then use them for revision or assessment purposes. And the good news is they pretty much mark themselves. Okay, so we just put in a name and an introduction here. I'll leave all those default settings as they are for the time being. So we've just set the quiz up. We now need to add a question from the question bank. So select that and we add it. So the interface has improved. The workflow is a little bit more intuitive for the quiz module than it was previous. So that's all set up good to go just in a couple of clicks. And again, naturally the questions need to be set up first and they could be multi-choice, true, false, matching key concepts, etc. Um, other activities that have been uh, improved and that are, are noteworthy, I guess the SCORM activity, uh, for those not familiar with SCORM, it gives us the ability to monitor, assess, track and report on our learners and their interactions with the learning content via Moodle and the content might have been or was most likely authored with a third party program. Um, it could have been uh, the likes of Articulate or Captivate or one of the other authoring tools. Um, you know, with the SCORM in Moodle, there's now more display options, better navigation and reporting functionality. A couple others, the wiki. The wiki is a collaborative series of pages that anybody can uh, contribute and collaborate, um, can collab collaborate on. Um, I would check out the wiki functionality. There's now the ability to comment, um, which is which is a you know a welcome feature. Um, and then the workshop. The workshop module has been resurrected for those uh, who were familiar with it in earlier versions of Moodle, and for those who are not, um, you know the workshop is essentially it's a it's an excellent peer um, peer assessment tool. Okay, um, so you'll be able to set up, submit, assess, and grade and evaluate. Um, you know, in a very stepwise fashion. So again, um, without demonstrating those, I'd encourage you to simply Moodle and check them out for yourself. Okay, look, I'm going to navigate out of this particular course, perhaps back to the front page momentarily. Uh, now have a little look at cohorts. We're now sort of on to uh, managing, I guess, the learning path for users. Cohorts is synonymous with site-wide groups. It's been a very wanted feature of Moodle, and you know the core development team are very responsive, and uh, you know the community wanted this feature in 2.0, and they've got it. So this is pretty much how it works. Um, naturally, the system admin will need to go via the site admin block on the front page. Courses, pardon me, users, accounts, cohorts. First need to create the cohort. So a cohort could be defined as a group, a site-wide group of people. Um, you know, they might, they might share something in common. It could be the business function, it could be a degree, um, you know, of study. Um, it could be a geographic location. I guess the people managing the system need to determine what constitutes a cohort. It's like a really big group of users that you want to macro manage. Okay, so look, I'll just call this the, let's say this is the, uh, this is the summer cohort. So it might be a semesterized approach to what we're doing here. And you've got two contexts where you can apply cohort, the cohort functions, either globally, as in system-wide, all users in all contexts, or you can granularize it down to the, the category level. And you can see miscellaneous is our only, and it's in fact the default category. Um, so you could apply it at either context, say system-wide for this particular cohort. The next screen we get presented with is um, I guess the editing screen and we're able to assign users to this particular cohort and this is a very useful function when you have many users and instead of going to each of the courses or each of the categories and having to micromanage them there um, you can do most of the hard work here as a system administrator in a pretty quick fashion so look we select our users we'll add them to this particular cohort so 
what this will then do for us if we find our way to a particular course Now, what we will do, um, I guess at this stage you need to be uh, need to be mindful that um, the cohort sync enrollment plugin needs to be enabled by the system administrator globally, and then perhaps you as a teacher or else the system administrator or course manager would need to come in and ensure it's also enabled uh, as an enrollment method um, within the said course. Um, that way. I guess the members of the cohort also get synchronized as members of, of the course if that's in fact intended. So look, we'll choose cohort sync as a possible enrollment method. We've got to choose the cohort that we're looking to sync with this particular course. And we add that method. So just to check, I mean this indicates there's now two users um, enrolled in this course. Again, that, imagine that could be 200 or 2,000 in a couple of clicks. Clicks. It's a very uh, attractive um, function. So look, we could come into the participants in this particular course and see who we've got. And you can now see we do in fact have two enrolled students. So that's in essence what cohorts uh, will allow us to do. Site-wide groups or category groups, I guess, is another way to conceptualize it. Okay, let's have a look. Um, we'll perhaps navigate um, navigate to the sand pit. We'll go to our pretty blank canvas as it appears here. Um, we're looking to, um, well, conditional activities we'll have a little look at. It, it will allow us to restrict the availability of certain activities in a course um, and make it dependent on various conditions. It could be based on date or a grade or completion of another activity. So, you know, conditional activities might be for you if you're looking to really control and structure um, the learning path for your students. And it might in fact be a very linear uh, learning sequence. Um, it's not for everybody. If you're more about sort of a non-linear, sort of a very informal, social, collaborative um, method of web-based learning, uh, I'd probably advise against conditional activities. In any case, here's a quick look at it. So look, we turn editing on. Now what we might do, we're going to set up some sort of sequence because we've got some resources happening here already. We've got a forum and we've got a quiz. So we might make it that uh, the user needs to view the forum before they can complete the quiz. Okay. And when they've completed the quiz, uh, we should then be able to uh, you know, indicate that they've completed the course. Let's just say there's a very small course and there's only a couple activities in it. Um, and the course completion status is tracked, that progress is tracked, and um, that status is reflected to the student and the teacher or the admin. So what we might, what we might need to do, I guess the first thing here is via... Um, course settings, again presuming conditional activities has been uh, enabled system wide, we want to also come in and ensure that um, student progress completion tracking has been enabled. It won't be on by default and that um, I would check the box as well to indicate that completion tracking does commence upon enrollment. So back to the course now let's go to this forum and we've already set it up but we can update and revisit the activity settings. So what we want to indicate here is that show the activities complete when conditions are met and we'll check the box. The criteria here for activity completion will be that the student must view this activity. If you wanted a stricter criteria, you would probably require them to perhaps post 
or discuss or reply um, so many times um, to a given discussion forum. Okay, that's now been set up, so there is some sort of criteria there associated with the forum. Now let's have some sort of um, dependency, if you like, between the forum and the quiz. This is, I guess, the conditional nature of these two activities now. We're going to uh, try and set it up so that the quiz cannot be accessed until the forum has first been viewed. And let's presume there's some information in the forum that's relevant to the, uh, the quiz that is subsequent. So the idea then, if we scroll past most of these settings toward the bottom, with availability, activity, uh, we'll have a look here, we will say, um, Activity completion condition, we will say forum. The forum must first be marked as complete. Okay, as far as completion is concerned, um, we'll show the activity as complete when conditions are met. And more to the point, um, they'll need to, uh, a grade will be required, let's say, with respect to this quiz. Okay, so in essence, what we've done here is the student will first need to view the forum before the quiz become, become available and then for the quiz to be uh, indicated as completed um, and all conditions met, the condition is that a grade must be received. And if we want, we can specify what that grade in fact is. I'll, I'll perhaps quickly detour to indicate what would be involved there. This is via Gradebook and again this is perhaps a little bit of advanced uh, functionality, but via the Moodle Gradebook, you could go to um, Simple View, and for this quiz activity, this particular grade item, if we update that, we can indicate here the grade to pass, we can set that as 10 out of 10, which is essentially 100% for that particular quiz. So the student needs to get full full marks for the grade to be considered a pass and for the uh, condition to be met uh, for that activity. So we've set that up. Uh, I guess the other thing we could now do uh, perhaps we won't but if we really did want to, we could set up a course as a prerequisite for the successful completion of another. So, you know, we could say that you need to uh, need to complete the Moodle features demo as a prerequisite for the Sandpit course or vice versa. Um, so that's very achievable as well, but perhaps beyond the scope of what we're demoing today. Look, I think it's time to log out and let's have a look at this uh, system through the eyes of a student momentarily. Now you can see upon login, they've been redirected to the My Moodle page, so that's their personalised page. Okay, um, and uh, I guess the the, the learning um, information and the courses that belong to them at this point in time. Self complete this course. assuming the, the user has stepped through what they needed to read, what they needed to do without any conditional activities necessarily having been set up within the activities of the course. So that has been done. Now we might navigate to another course and the user wishes to self-enroll and that's just been done. So let's have a look how these uh, conditional activities play out. Okay, We can see that the quiz is sort of 
it's been uh, it's it's quite faint. Um, that won't be available until um, a condition is met with the forum. And if you recall, um, the forum needed to be viewed. Okay, so the user would need to come in, view the forum. If they return to the course page, the quiz should then be available. So they go about attempting the quiz. So they submit their attempt. And you finish the review having having viewed the, the grade and the feedback. That's that's the idea behind uh, conditional activities. As far as hubs is concerned, again, uh, If uh, your organisation uh, decides to run its own hub, I guess the idea is you, you're looking to share and promote courses with others. Uh, it's a pretty big undertaking, uh, but it'll be important that you, uh, you download and install the hubs module, which isn't part of the standard Moodle. Um, it's, not, it's not recommended that uh, you install the hub software on a standard Moodle instance, so you'll want to set up a separate Moodle instance for the purpose of your hub. Um, so don't use your existing Moodle instance um, as the place to add your hub code. Okay, but the idea of the hub is essentially a central repository where you can promote and store your courses um, for trusted Moodle instances. Okay, um, and certainly advertise and publish your courses to the hub. Um, so they you know they're Shareable, linkable, downloadable. Okay, so let's presume um, the way we would go about that, I suppose, again, uh, needing to log out as student, perhaps come back in as an admin. Okay, on the front page, site administration registration, the system admin uh, will be able to register your Moodle instance either with a specific hub uh, that is known and trusted uh, and or register with Mooch, which is the, uh, the official Moodle community hub. Okay, so that's what you'll want to go about doing firstly. The idea then will be if we find our way to, and we're already registered with one hub here by way of an example, but let's navigate through to a course. So if you were looking to promote and advertise your course, you could come in as either a, an administrator or Course manager. Course manager is a new role to Moodle 2.0. It's, it's, I guess it's, uh, it's higher up the food chain than a teacher in this respect because you can publish a course. So again, when the hubs function is enabled, it gives you the ability to either advertise or share. So advertise the course for people to join. Let's try that first. So you select the hub where you wish to advertise this particular course. So you need to put in some essential information there. The name of the course, its description, the publisher, the creator, the license information, the subject, which is and some creator notes. 
Okay, so that is advertised now on the hub. Bearing in mind, again, the hub is a separate Moodle instance with a specific hub code that's been uh, downloaded and installed via Moodle.org. So we've just advertised that particular course. Um, we might, in fact, want to share it as well. So sharing, sharing will give the end user the ability to download the, the course and then restore it into their own middle instance. So uh, you certainly anonymize all of the user information that won't be included in this particular backup. So we step through the wizard very quickly. and perform the backup. So the course has been sent, essentially published uh, over at the Moodle Hub. Okay, so let's have a look how that plays out. Okay, so what we can do over here, again, this is the specific hub software that's been installed on this particular instance of Moodle. It's not a Moodle that's typically used for the courses itself and the typical communication, collaboration and uh, assessment that would go on in a standard Moodle instance. It's really, as we said, the repository for promoting and storing courses and then certainly sharing them and uh, downloading them. So look, we can, uh, we can browse for our courses that uh, we can enroll in. And that should serve up a, uh, certainly the course that we uh, published there before if we're looking for courses that we can download. There we have it. So courses that are available there and you can see the link okay, where you can actually download the course and then restore um, that course to your own Moodle instance. So it's all about, I guess, promoting and sharing good Moodle courses with other Moodle users via the, the hub or the central uh, repository. All right, well, I reckon that's just about enough for a bit of, you know, a snapshot of what Moodle 2 uh, has got on offer. I think all that remains is really to go get the software, start planning for the next step. Um, you know, there might be a fair bit of new learning involved here for existing uh, Moodle users, and anyone new, um, there's a fair bit involved certainly to get yourself up and running. Um, but again, the software is freely available via Moodle.org, and look, if you need help, uh, the community, the Moodle community is very generous. Um, if you need um, you know, expert and commercial assistance, you know, in the way of hosting or training or support, I'd recommend that you contact your preferred Moodle partner or a trusted learning solutions provider. But in any case, relax, enjoy. I hope this uh, screencast has been uh, useful and happy Moodling.